Hi there, it's Brooke, and we are starting another cook with me. So I have a new cookbook. It's not that new, I've had it for a while, but I'm gonna use it for the first time now. So I've picked up three different recipes to cook. Here is the cookbook we'll be using. It's the Food Network magazine, The Best and Lightest. It says 150 healthy recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I will link this down below. I did get it off of Amazon. I think I got it used, so um, I'll just link it down below for you. So that's the cookbook we'll use for this cook with me. I hope you enjoy them, so let's get cooking. Here is the Italian wedding soup. It says it serves four. The ingredients are extra virgin olive oil, small onion, carrots, garlic, Worcestershire sauce, fresh sage, I'm using dried, um, low sodium or fat free chicken broth. I just have regular, so that's what I'm gonna use. It says grated Parmesan cheese plus more for topping. I'm just using the grated that's in the like container you put in the fridge. And then I have some of the shaved Parmesan left for topping that we used on the soup in the last cook with me, ground pork, pork, panko breadcrumbs, orzo, and then eight ounces of baby spinach. My bag was only six, so we'll have a little less of that. And here are the instructions. If you wanted to screenshot them at all. So first I'm gonna start with the veggies and then we'll get to the rest. I've heated one tablespoon of olive oil in here and now I'm going to put in the finely chopped onions and carrots. Give them a good stir. I love the sizzle sound in here. So it says stirring until slightly softened about four minutes. I am gonna set my timer. Now that my carrots and onions are slightly softened, I'm gonna add half the garlic, which is one clove which is half a teaspoon. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire. And it says I need one teaspoon fresh sage. So to use dry, you're supposed to use about a third of that. So I'm just gonna use a small half a teaspoon. Or you could use a large fork. So you're gonna let this meld together for about one minute. Now I'm gonna add three cups of chicken broth and then three cups of water. And this is where you add the Parmesan rind, but I am not doing that. So we're gonna bring this to a boil, cover, simmer about seven minutes until the veggies are soft. So I'm gonna move over to the ground pork. So for the ground pork, I added three tablespoons of these panko breadcrumbs. I got these a while ago, and that's just what Walmart had. I added one tablespoon of the grated Parmesan cheese. This is what we have. I added another clove of garlic, which is just a half a teaspoon of the minced garlic here. And then I added another teaspoon of the Worcestershire and then one third teaspoon of this So my small half a teaspoon and then a half a pound of ground pork It says mix it all together and form it into one inch meatballs. So that's what I'm gonna do so cute. This is the first time I've ever made homemade meatballs. Hmm. Last time we just showed you the crostoni kind of just made or whatever, but I wanted to show you kind of what I buy this time. So I just buy one of the dollar French breads from Walmart, and then I always take my serrated knife, and I'm going to cut it just along the like groove they give you. And I'm going to cut about half, so I'm gonna go right in the middle of those middle two and then I do keep mine in the fridge now because last time we kept it on the counter and it kind of molded really quick I'm putting it in the oven and crisping it up so it doesn't really matter if it's cold if you're gonna eat it right away I say don't worry about it but if you're not gonna make your soup for a couple days or whatever you're gonna eat it for I would probably put it in your fridge so now I'm just gonna cut I don't know three-fourths inch 
thick pieces as evenly as I can. Put some tin foil on a cookie sheet. We'll heat these out. This one's gonna be a snack. Then I just take some extra virgin olive oil and put a little bit in a bowl. And always add more. Can't put it back in. And then just paint your bread. And I'm gonna sprinkle salt on each piece. Sprinkle some pepper. Then I'm going to flip and do it all over again. It has been seven minutes, so now I need to bring it to a boil again on medium-high heat, and then I'll be adding the orzo. It's boiling once again. I'm going to put in my three-fourths cup of orzo and let it cook for six minutes. So the oven is preheated to 425. I'm going to do these for three minutes and then flip and then three minutes. I think we'll be good enough. Next, I'm going to add the meatballs, and it says cook until firm, and they float to the top about four minutes. So the meatballs have been in for four minutes and they've floated to the top. It was super cute. And now I'm gonna put the spinach in for about a minute until it wilts. My spinach is wilted. So I'm gonna take it off the heat and let it cool and then we'll, or not let it cool, but sit a second and then we'll dish up. Here's my soup with a little parmesan in it and my crostoni all ready to eat. I will let you know how it tastes. Well, supper is all done and we've cleaned up everything so it's all nice and fresh in here and the supper was pretty good. The soup was pretty good. Um, I think it had a little too much spinach in it. I don't know why or it needed like more broth in it or something to kind of balance that out and I even used less so I don't know how that all works. So, but the meatballs were kind of fun. They floated to the top and they had a little bit different flavor in there but it was good with the crostoni. We liked the other soup better but this one was good too. It was fun to try so... Hope you enjoyed it. Well, we are back with another meal today. We are making Indian chicken wraps. So I had to buy some ginger, which I've never bought before, and peeled it, which you all saw me get all my veggies ready and everything ready that I need. So now I get to use my new little appliance I bought. And I'll show you that, and then I'll show you the recipe quick so you kind of know what we're making. And it calls for two cups of shredded rotisserie chicken, and I just did my little crock pot hack where I did one chicken thigh and one giant chicken breast. To make the two cups, it's probably right around two cups, give or take a little bit. So that is what I did. Instead of the rotisserie chicken, I've done that with other things. I don't want to deal with rotisserie chicken, so that's how I kind of get the same effect. I put one chicken cube in there and then just some salt and pepper on the chicken. I'll show you the recipe and then we get to use my new toy. So here is the recipe quick. You make paste and a sauce and then you put it all together and we'll put it in the nan bread. I just got pita bread. This is what I picked up from Walmart. And here are the instructions 
instructions. So we're gonna make the paste and then mix the like sauce and then we're gonna do the veggies and the chicken and then get that all mixed up for inside the pitas. So this is my new little ninja food processor. It's called an express chop because it will chop mince and puree. I'm going to be using it for the puree. I just used my hand chopper to do a coarse chop instead of my little back and forth thing, my more dicer. So this is what we're gonna use. So it's this, it does have a power pack with a cord and then you just pulse it to however you want. And it does say chop, you do a little less. Um, for like the puree, you do a little bit longer pulses. And then it does have like a lid here. You put this on when you use it, but if you wanna store whatever's in the bowl, you can close the little hole. So that's nice. I got this at Target for 20 bucks. I've always wanted a little food processor. The one I bought for my Big Ninja blender did not work, so I think this will be just perfect. So the ginger, chilies, onion, cumin, and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. And then it says pulse to make a thick paste. So here we go. <laughs> So that is my thick paste. So now I'm gonna heat some oil in a skillet and while that's heating, I'm gonna make up the Greek sauce. So I bought plain Greek yogurt and it just says plain yogurt. So hopefully that doesn't affect the taste. I read it wrong, obviously, like I always do. Can I help you? Get out of here. What video behind it? I just added two teaspoons of fresh lime juice, and then I have a third cup fresh cilantro. She doing it right, Coco? And it says a, a pinch of salt. A pinch of salt. Looks a little more than a pinchy. Get her out of there! She's she looking. She's watching you. So it says to scoop a layer of the chicken mixture onto your pita, and then drizzle it with the sauce, and then roll it up. How's that look, Coco? Good. And then it says serve it with a side of potato chips. We have sour cream and cheddar, so that is my side of potato chips. Well, we are all finished with our Indian chicken wraps and they were pretty good. They didn't have like a super strong like flavor or anything. Um, could have used less chicken breast and maybe more chicken thigh. The meat got a little dry. Otherwise, it had a good mild flavor, not super peppery or anything like that. The Greek yogurt tasted fine. I don't know what plain yogurt tastes like, but the Greek tastes fine. So, and the pitas were super good. So, definitely make something like this again. I don't know if this exact recipe, but I definitely try something like this again with a pita and stuff like that that so stay tuned for the next and final recipe
Here is the third and final meal for my best and lightest cookbook. It's a turkey and green bean stir fry. I'll show you the recipe here quick. I've already finished the meal. It was just one of those kinds of nights. And show you what it looks like here as I plate it up. And then I will let you know how it tastes. So here is the turkey and green bean recipe. I use just some sort of long grain Zatarain's rice. Um, I didn't use anything low sodium. I had like a sherry cooking wine I used. I don't know if that's the same thing. And then, oh, the Asian chili paste. I'll show you what that looks like. This is the Asian chili paste I found, or the sambal ula, I guess. And I got it all over my shirt, so I need to go stain stick that after supper here. And then here is the directions. I just roasted my green beans. I did not broil them. I don't know really how to do the broiler on my <laughs> oven. So I just roasted them at 400 for like 12 minutes. Every four minutes, I just kind of tossed them but then I did everything else the same that is the recipe I did my rice in my rice cooker and I feel like I never get enough water in there for my rice I gotta remember do that even put a little bit more in there this time no it just seems to, like run out of water and get sticky on me but I did remember to rinse it so hopefully that's good and then here's the ground turkey and the green bean and then the, like the sauce it says the sauce will thicken a little bit but it's kind of nice to have it a little juicy and a little saucy so I think that's how it's supposed to be. So I'm going to dish it up and let you know what it tastes like. all finished with our beef and green bean to stir fry. I wondered why the meat was a little greasier and I'm pretty sure I used ground beef instead of turkey. That's what I get for not labeling my freezer bag. So I should have rinsed it because it was just a little greasy. I don't know. I have issues with making things too oily and greasy. Who knows? So it was pretty good. All the recipes for this book were really light on flavor. So if you're not a huge like flavor fan, I think this would be a good cookbook and everything. But we like maybe just a little bit more flavor in our stuff so you know there's ways you can add to that but otherwise the recipes were good overall so we enjoyed all three yeah. meals so I hope you enjoyed all three meals if you get some inspiration out of this or motivation to cook or try a new cookbook that's awesome hit that like button subscribe and I will see you in the next one